Hello, friend. Good morning, friend. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. Greetings and salutations, friends. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, friends. It has been a minute. It's been a long minute. Uh, you could even say it's been a moment. I have not updated in over a year. Life has been lifing. Transitions have been transitioning. Experiences have been experiencing. That whole deal. But I am back and I want to re-welcome you to a work in progress, a series on my channel where I talk about books that I'm writing, books that I'm reading, and just life being what it is, doing what it does. That way I can be the best that I can be. I'm here, which means I've made it. You're here, which means you've made it. And I would hope that you would like to be along for this journey with me. Could you please connect me to the YouTube? This is going to be a little bit of a catch up vlog. Vlog. Why do I keep? It's going to be a catch up vlog. Just so we kind of talk about where I've been, what I've been doing, what's been going on, and where we're gonna go from here. First, I'm gonna start with, you know, change my hair. I look a little bit different. I've been trying to make this video for over a year. As you can see from that little intro, I've gone through some changes. I have gone through some changes, one of them being I cut off all of my hair and I dyed it blonde. This is not the first time I've big shopped, but this is definitely the longest that, that I left it this short. And bleached blonde, it's a look, it's a vibe, it's got a certain je ne sais quoi, and I think it's here to stay. We'll see. I like to switch things up. So, you know, maybe my next video I pop on a wig, maybe my next video my hair is bright pink, who knows? But your girl is feeling it. Like I said, it's a look. It's a vibe. It's giving what it needs to give. First, I am going to start with this. I am in a little bit of a different place since the last time I posted a video. Let me not bury the lead. I moved. I made a very big location change. I used to live in South Carolina and around this time last year I actually moved to the DMV. I originally moved to Maryland and I stayed with one of my aunts for a couple of months and I was able to finesse my way into my own apartment in Washington DC. It's my first time living alone by myself. We're, we're managing. <laughs> We are managing. At the end of 2020, I decided that South Carolina had run its course. I'd lived there since 2002. I went to school there. I graduated college there. A lot of jobs. And I came to kind of a, a reasonable end to a tenure um, at the job that I had previously. And I just decided instead of just finding another job in a similar area, you know, in the same geographical area that I would, you know, I would just do south. <laughs> I would just move. I would make that big jump and move up the coast. And that is what I did because I feel like at the end of 2020, especially 2020 being what 2020 was, if I was going to make a big life change, that was the time to do it or I was never going to do it. Am I going to live in D.C. for much longer? No. Traffic, parking, I'm, I'm probably going to move back to Maryland. But I can always say I lived in D.C. I had my own D.C. apartment. I was actually born in Washington, D.C. So being able to move here as an adult and experience it as an adult. Um, I mean, it's an experience. <laughs> I don't know if I signed up for this, but I'm here. I actually kind of had a false start before I decided to like move. So I was working a job with county government, kind of elevated into a position right above um, admin assistant. 
and you know I was kind of it was like I was trying to get my groove there was a lot of BS going on but as as such this is capitalism this is the society that we live in you're gonna find BS no matter where you go but I had somebody sort of proposition me I don't like using that word it sounds very sexual it was not of that nature, but somebody presented me with a potential opportunity to divert my career path at the time into something that I never thought about, but I was actually really interested in. So the guy who was kind of the director over the local chapter of the Veterans Administration in the county that I was working in kind of presented me with an opportunity to come you know, kind of transfer to his department, be an admin assistant for a while with the potential opportunity to do the training and do the testing to get, I guess, my credentials to become a veterans administration counselor. I wasn't really interested in just becoming an admin assistant in a different department because I was already doing like above admin assistant stuff and I was just like don't try to have me transfer and then I lose my pay and I get paid less than what I was getting paid and I was already getting less I was already getting paid less than what I was worth but I think he could see that I wasn't really like digging it when he was presenting the opportunity of becoming an admin assistant for his department so to sweeten the deal he kind of tried to get me with you know he's trying to find somebody that he could eventually get trained up and tested to become a veterans counselor um and it it'd be even like two birds one stone type of thing if it were a woman because the department was they only had male counselors and there are female veterans who would probably be more comfortable talking about their experiences and getting resources from another woman, from a female veterans counselor. So I hadn't thought that that was an opportunity, that was like a career path I could go down. Me being a military brat, I don't know why I didn't think about that, but I'm very, um, I'm very passionate about our veterans and how they're treated and so I actually came up here to Maryland that Thanksgiving uh, to visit my family I talked to my uncle who was in the army for 27 years and I was like hey do you think this is like a decent opportunity do you think I have the like disposition to handle something like this and you know he you know responded very positively um about yeah like you know you're gonna hear about some you're gonna hear about some stuff and then there's some stuff you're not gonna hear about but you're gonna have to deal with it because of you know, PTSD and things like that but you know he was like very encouraging so after Thanksgiving I came back to work and I emailed the guy and I was like hey you know what I thought it over and yeah I am interested in possibly transferring to your department with the intention to hopefully at some point become a veterans administration counselor and then I didn't hear from him for like a week and then he emailed me back and basically was just like hey I do just want to clarify that um there's no guarantee about like becoming a counselor type of thing it really is just an admin assistant position but also at the beginning of the year we're going to post the role publicly like externally and you can go ahead and apply that way and if you're a good fit And I was like, so you came into my office, you wasted my time, you presented me with a false future only to tell me there's no guarantee that I would be anything more than an administrative assistant in your department. And then also that I would not be able to transfer internally. I would basically have to compete. I would have to interview with other normies outside of the organization for an admin assistant role. I was highly upset. I was very pissed off. 
Um, so that was kind of the last straw on top of a lot of unnecessary straws, but that was definitely the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back. So within like a week's time after that, I didn't, I never responded to the guy, um, but basically within a week's time, I was like, I'm moving. <laughs> I really thought that I was going to have, maybe not the role that I had, but I would be with the organization for a significant amount of time. Like I could have seen myself settling down there, getting a house there. I mean, once it got to the point where they paid me enough to be able to afford to live there. But after that, I was like, I'm done so. Like I'm over this. So yeah, within a week, I decided that I was going to move. And because I have family up here in Maryland, I was like, I'm gonna move to Maryland. I deuced out completely. That was tough. That was tough because I really thought I had a future there. Maybe not necessarily with the organization, but just regionally. I thought, you know, my family moved to, moved to South Carolina when I was like 11 years old and I really hated it. Mainly because I grew up in San Antonio, Texas. So I'm like, there's so much more to do in San Antonio, Texas than there was in small town, South Carolina. But as long as I'd been there, I'd kind of found things worth being there for. So I did kind of see myself like, I could have, I would have been okay with continuing to be there. Um, and that was really, I was just like, ugh. I was able to, you know, get a, a pretty decent job. Like I like what I do. I make a decent amount of money, enough money where on a single income, I can live in Washington, DC. Um, so yeah, it's that's been a very big uh, transition. One with moving to a brand new location where I could not really fall back on who you know, which is very much a small town Southern type of thing it's just like oh well it's not so much can you do the job it's who do you know that can vouch for you who do you know that can help you get your foot in the door very much still an old boys type of club so definitely moving up here and being able to secure to secure a very good uh job is really a blessing like it's a, been a godsend it's not been without its stressors um but I can't ever say that I didn't try. I didn't attempt. Um, and so, yeah, moving has been a very big thing. Work has been a very big thing. Another very big transition that I've made is relationships. I don't really talk about it on social media. I hadn't really talked about it a lot on social media, not just like on my very the very beginnings of my channel but even uh facebook um twitter instagram anything like that i've never really like openly openly talked about it but i was in a relationship for five years i was in a i was in a long-term relationship for over five years most of it was long distance at some point during the relationship my ex <laughs> my ex went into the military so that definitely made the long distance aspect of it even more prominent in the relationship but that relationship came to a screeching halt in october and this was a person that i thought i would spend the rest of my life with i was gonna marry we were gonna have kids the whole friggin shebang and i came upon the knowledge, God bless my best friend, God bless my best friend, but I came upon the knowledge that infidelity was in the works on their part, not on mine. So yeah, I that was not something I had on my 2021 bingo card, but honestly, I'm gl not glad that it happened. I feel like that was like, I don't know, it was a plot twist that was just kind of unnecessary, like really? But also I do think that I was probably holding on to a relationship that it, it did what it needed to do. I learned certain lessons by being in that relationship, but like it was not meant to be for the long haul. And I think I was holding on to something that was very actively withering and dying. And I needed, I needed, that final straw 
I needed the thing that would have me close that chapter for good. And wouldn't you know it, infidelity was that thing. Not even infidelity, <laughs> because I'm a forgiving dumbass. Repeated infidelity in that I found out, found out about the infidelity, talked about it, let him know, not okay, disrespectful, how dare, but I was still very much in the forgiving, I don't wanna hold on to this negativity if I feel like we maybe still have like a future or something that we can salvage. And then again, God bless my best friend, the infidelity was continuing, it was still happening, it was active not past tense, not passive, it was active infidelity. And then it was just like, <laughs> bye, fuck you, dude. And I gave myself a week to get over it. I gave myself a week, which is wild to think about. A five-year relationship, I gave myself a week to get over a five-year relationship, but I did. I basically gave myself a week. I gave myself a week to be sad about it, to let my friends know, to let my mom know. You know it's over when you let your mom know. You know it's over when you tell your mom. But yeah, I gave myself a week. I was making jokes about it. My cousin was the only one who like let me laugh about it because everybody was just like, trauma, come on. I need to use humor to get over things. This is what trauma has done to me. Like, this is how my brain works. Just, just laugh, just laugh. It's funny, you can laugh, it's funny, it's okay. I gave myself a week to get over it. I got on Bumble. I matched with like 13 dudes in the span of a couple of hours. I matched with like, I actually started talking to I think like three guys. I really hit it off with one of them. We went on two dates and in this short amount of time, he's my boyfriend. He is great and amazing and magnificent and all these things that I was expecting my ex to be or all these things that I was expecting my ex to live up to or to become or decide one day that he would start to fulfill like just basic basic qualities that like the potential was there but we gotta stop staying for potential we gotta stay for actionable results. Everything that I was asking God and the universe and whoever, whomst ever is out there listening, everything I was asking for, I got it. I just didn't get it the way that I expected. And I think that was kind of the moral of the story. And the, the biggest lesson that I learned in 2021 with moving, with work, with relationships, with everything is this idea of having to let go of the things that we think we want and the things that we think we need so we can get what we actually deserve. Very wild, very, very wild. And also the fact that five years, I got over that shit in a week. How quality was that relationship if I was able to get over a five year relationship in a week's time? I don't know, kind of sus, but I'll eventually talk to a therapist about it, who knows. So all of this kind of comes down to my writing. All of this has affected my writing. All of this has inspired my writing. I have actually not been writing. <laughs> I started the year great. I have gone on a couple of writing retreats with my writing ladies. I have, I finished act one of my wolf story. I'm still very much working on wolf. Project Wolf, my wolf book, whatever. I still don't have a title. We're just gonna talk, we're just gonna call it Wolf for the time being. But I finished act one and life just kept lifing. And I have not been able to really get into the mindset of working on it again. Part of it has been work because as much as I like my job, it's been very mentally draining living life in 2021 has been very mentally draining to the point where I would get home from work and I would not have the mental, I would not have the mental bandwidth to work on the things that I love. I haven't been able to write for fandom. I haven't been able to write my book. I haven't been able to, you know, do a lot of the things that I love 
and like that keep me going because I just did not have the mental space. I, I, I haven't. And I think that's the unfortunate thing because you know, I'm, I was making so many changes in my life. I was like, okay, yeah, once I get this switch situated, then I'll be able to focus. Once I do this, then I'll be able to write. Once I do this, then I'll be able to whatever. And I, I never kind of got there. You know, it's one of those things is like, you know, if you're waiting to get ready, it'll never happen. But also, there were things that needed to be taken care of and there was growth that needed to happen and there was healing that needed to happen and thankful it, it did and now we're in 2022 and i am ready to get back at it i've been trying to get back to my youtube channel which i promise you like literally for the past year i've been trying to make vlogs i've got all of this b-roll that i've just been sitting on of all these trips that i took and getting to hang out with my friends and like work and when i was still writing like all of these different things that i've been wanting to share and i just haven't had the opportunity and like i feel like coming back to my channel is going to incentivize me but also hold me accountable to you know my writing journey hold me accountable to reading more just hold me accountable to documenting the things that i love in this life and not getting so bogged down with the things that suck because there's a lot of things that suck and I'm tired of kind of like just sitting and stewing in that field I mean at the end of the day like you you have to grieve you have to feel what you feel but I'm not a type of person like I don't I don't like to sit in like gross that was part of why I only took a week to get over a relationship I was just like I'm a feel gross and then I'm gonna get over it um and that's kind of how I feel about 2020 2021 I'm just like Ugh, I'm, I'm over it I took my bl metaphorical bleach bath and I'm clean <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm over it I'm done and I'm ready to get back at it so the goal for 2022 especially with my channel and just in terms of like life and my betterment for like what I want to do in terms of writing finishing my book writing all these other ideas that I have and all these Pinterest boards that I've made and all these playlists on Spotify that I've made I want to recommit I want to prioritize all of that so for 2022 I'm going to get back into writing. I haven't gotten a schedule yet, especially when it comes to uploading vlogs or videos or whatever I decide that I really want to do with this work in progress series. But I know for books, I have all these books, like so many books. This isn't all the books I have. I left some of them at home, but I have all these books. I haven't read in a very long time. I haven't read a book in a very long time. So my recommitment to reading this year is I want to do 22 books for 2022. 12 of those books are going to be books that I've been sitting on my TBR just waiting to be read. I'm finally going to get around to about 12 of those and then 12 of those books I want to read recommendations. I want to read books that booktubers and author tubers that I really really like and like I I value their opinion and like on literature, on life, on the world, on whatever like books that they really love and they recommend i'm gonna read those books my friends like books that they've been telling me to read for forever i want to read those books um people that i work with you know just a random book that i see advertised that seems really good like i want to read those books so 12 of the books that i'm going to read are books that I've been meaning to read, books that I've probably posted on Instagram, like I've read them and I never finished them. I want to pick those back up and then 12 of them are going to be recommendations, like external recommendations. And then writing, I'm going to get back into it. I'm going to get back into writing Wolf more actively. I want to do some short stories of all these ideas that maybe I haven't gotten to yet and I think maybe they would be good as a novel but I haven't gotten the chance to really flesh them out like I want to write like a vignette or want to write a short story so I can get the main like meat of that idea on paper so I can kind of put it to the side and focus on something else so I have 
good feelings about this year. I'm gonna knock on wood, I'm gonna knock on wood. <laughs> but I have good feelings about this year. It is the first snow day of the year in DC. I've been literally like snowed into my apartment. So it feels like I have no choice but to be productive and really focus on what I wanna get done this year. And you know, I really hope that you like some of what you've heard and that you decide to stick around on this journey with me. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Post in the comments what you what you plan to do with your 2022. What are your book goals? What are your writing goals? What are your life goals? What are your resolutions? What are your new year solutions? What are you gonna do with your 2022? I'm really interested in hearing about that and I don't know when the next video will be up, but I will see you then.